Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra Take Home 6. We're using the same vector space and same transformation we had in Take Home 5. In this homework though, we're asked to find a basis for the kernel of t, extend the basis we got to a basis for the entire domain, and then use that to find a basis for the image of t. So in the last Take Home assignment, we found a matrix representation for this transformation. So one way we could find the kernel of t is to find the null space of that matrix and then convert those coordinates back to see what they mean in terms of um, the standard basis for v. Or we could proceed just by definition. And I'm going to proceed by definition here. And we got to remember, what is the kernel of a transformation? Well, by definition, it's all vectors in the domain so that their image is the zero vector in the range. Now, since here the, uh, or the codomain, since here the codomain matches the domain, it's still the zero vector then in V. And what's this mean in terms of, of the specific V we have now? Well, V is two by two matrices, and this is the transform, uh, transformation. So really what we're looking for is the set of all 2 by 2 matrices so that uh, T of A equals the 0 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, so let's set T of A equal to the 0 matrix. That means that A minus A transpose is the 0 matrix. That means that A has to equal a transpose. So, you know, one way we could do this is, is the kernel of T then is a set of all symmetric 2 by 2 matrices. Okay? Um, which says everything, but it really doesn't help us find a basis for that. So let's actually spell out what that means. So the kernel of T is going to be the set of all A, B, C, D's where A, B, C, D is its transpose. That's the set of all A, B, C, D so that A, B, C, D is equal to the transpose, which is going to be A, C, B, D. So this is the set of all A, B, C, D. Well, what has to happen? Um, entry by entry, those are the same automatically. B and C have to be the same here. C and B have to be the same there. And those are true automatically. So the only condition really is that B and C are the same. So now this gives me the set, say, A, B, B, D. So if I take A, B, B, D and break that up in terms of the standard basis, I have A times this vector plus b times this vector plus uh, d times this vector. Clearly, these three vectors are linearly independent, so that means a basis for the kernel of t is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Alright, so we have a three-dimensional kernel. So that'll do it for part A. Okay, for part B now, we're asked to expand this basis to a basis for the entire domain, which is the 2 by 2 matrices. Since the standard basis for the 2 by 2 matrices has four elements in it, it's a four-dimensional space, which means all I need to do is add one vector to get a, um, to, I need to add a vector 
to get four linearly independent vectors. That'll give me a basis then for the 2 by 2 matrices. So how do I choose the vector to add in? Well, we have a theorem that says if you can find a vector that's not in the span of these original vectors, then when you add that vector in, you're going to have a linearly independent set. Well, what is this, what's the span of these vectors? Well, it's the kernel of t, and the span of these vectors looks like this guy here. So all I have to do is pick a matrix that doesn't have this pattern to it. A and D can be arbitrary numbers. I'm going to set them zero. All I really need to do is have a matrix where these two numbers are different. I'll pick one to be zero and one to be one. And so I claim that this is, uh, if I take this guy, this guy, and this guy, and I'll add in this guy, zero, one, zero, zero. This is not of the form A, B, B, D, because the diagonal entries here, or on the off diagonal, uh, these entries are different. Okay, so I claim that's linearly independent. And in the privacy of your own home, you can see if you take a, a combination C1 of this, plus C2 of that, plus C3 of that, plus C4 of that, and it's equal to zero, this has the only um, contribution to the 1, 1 entry. That's going to force that guy to be zero. This is the only contribution to the uh, 2, 2 entry, so that's going to be 0. This is the only entry, the only contribution to the 2, 1 entry, so that's 0. And then we would have 0 plus C4 equals 0, which would force C4 then to be 0. So you can quickly check that we do have four linearly independent matrices here, which means we're going to have a basis for the space. Now, when we think back to the proof of the, of the dimension theorem, how the dimension theorem worked is that we had a basis for the kernel, expanded it to a basis for the entire domain. The image of each of these guys is going to be zero. So the image then is going to be spanned by the images of the vectors that aren't in the kernel, and in fact we proved that those guys would be linearly independent. So uh, what's going to be the basis for the image of T? The basis for the image of T is going to be T of that vector. Uh, so I take T of this matrix. That's this matrix minus its transpose. So it's 0, 1, 0, 0 minus 0, 1, 0, 0 which is 0, 0, or 0, 1, negative 1, 0. So this is a basis for the image of T. So that'll do it for take-home 6.